Hello friends, my name is Molly. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I know a lot of you on this channel are working on committing to a more consistent yoga practice and motivation is such a big part of staying on that path and working on everyday input. In my journey of doing yoga every day for about three years now, I definitely learned a lot about motivation and how to cultivate it. And this is what I'm going to be sharing today. Some of the ways that I've learned to stay motivated and how to cultivate that motivation in your practice and honestly in anything that you're trying to stay consistent with. Motivation is a great feeling that helps us feel inspired, that helps us feel empowered. And if you're practicing yoga every day, this video is going to be definitely for you because if you can cultivate more motivation, it is going to be very helpful for your journey. But honestly, I think this video is for anyone who is trying to achieve certain goals. And we all know that goals that are worth achieving require consistent effort. Motivation is a big part of it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's start with basics. Identify your why or your goals. Every day is an achievement when it comes to a daily practice or consistent practice. And by outlining your goals and by recognizing them and putting conscious effort to see them, you give yourself much less space to pretend like these reasons don't exist. In a way, it's very freeing because you start to be managed by that why, by that goal that you have. You have much less space to decide whether you do your practice today or not based on your mood. These goals, these whys of yours will be changing. This is natural. So you can outline them every week or every month. When I first started, I definitely wrote down my goals because I didn't have a bigger why yet. And by observing my practices and how they relate to my goals, I definitely felt much more motivated to continue, even if I didn't see immediate results. And by reminding yourself about that bigger goal, that why, you are bringing much more motivation into that daily act of practicing whatever you need to practice. If you haven't done it, do it. It's definitely a good basic to cover. And number two, a big part of getting that motivation back into your life is seeing what kills it. And big killer of motivation is that feeling of stagnation and failure. It is definitely something that can really get to you in the moment and make you feel very demotivated. And uh, I'm not a stranger to that feeling. Through my practice, I've definitely encountered lots of feeling of stagnation, lots of feeling of failure. It's very frustrating, it's very demotivating. But with time and consistent practice, I started to see those failures not as obstacles, but as opportunities. And I know it might sound very cliche, however, it is so true. Every time I fail, every time I feel like I'm not moving anywhere, this is an opportunity for me to enjoy that kind of process of loading. And in that moment, of feeling like a failure. Teachers were pointing out how it's important to find space to be okay with not being where you think you're supposed to be and kind of sitting with it and embracing the moment that you're in. It's been three years since I started practicing yoga and I definitely achieved a lot. And looking back, I see now that all of those moments of struggle, all of those moments of failure were actually so precious. Yes, achieving those things and goals is amazing, but what really mattered and what really is the most funnest part is that journey of trying. And those moments of perseverance is really what makes me feel proud and, and what really makes me feel strong. I see that this is that beautiful moment of cultivating that power. So instead of viewing these stages in your practice as the villains and undesirable points, try to see the opportunity in it. Try to sit with it and really feel this moment of this chapter that you're in because in hindsight, it is beautiful and worth enjoying, worth learning from and embracing. It was so sunny in the beginning of the video and it's so gloomy now. It's uh, pretty crazy. <laughs> and number three, criticism versus gratitude. So this is what I definitely want to point out as another motivation killer. Constantly nitpicking your practice, your body, and every time feeling like this is just the means to get to somewhere you want to be, but it's not right now. I definitely have days when I critique my body for looking certain way or my practice that it's not giving me what I need right now or it's not working as fast as I need it to be. But what I do constantly try to engage in, it really helps with motivation and with feeling like I want to come back to the space of this effort is to feel gratitude. Try to exert the gratitude at the end of the practice. For the piece, it helped me cultivate. 
activate and for the space it helped me create within. What I love to do is to, to squeeze myself into the ball and just really thank my body for performing everything it just did. It's a healthy working body. So shifting from that mindset of criticism into the mindset of gratitude, of thanking yourself and your body for coming to this practice, of feeling grateful for this practice itself. It is an addiction to not be satisfied with whatever you have right now. Goals, as we were discussing in the first point, can be great motivators, but if the goals are the only space you can imagine yourself being satisfied in, you're missing the point. It is really not easy, talking from personal experience, to constantly put effort into that gratitude mindset. However, it really does wonders to how you experience every day and just in general how your life flows and feels. So don't miss out on this tasty juice of daily gratitude and this will definitely charge you with so much more motivation to come back to this space and rejuvenate yourself again and again. Number four, and it is submerging yourself in that world of whatever you're practicing. You don't have to be the only person who keeps yourself motivated. You can seek inspiration from other people. For me personally, it's very necessary to keep listening and reading about yoga because otherwise I just lose touch with this world of internal reflection. No one in my world really practices yoga or tries to achieve that kind of lifestyle that I feel passionate about. So it's easy to forget about that spiritual, that internal part of yoga and this is the part that I personally value the most. So I have to actively keep myself inspired and motivated with listening to people, to podcasts and reading books. I can just even read a couple of sentences and it already leaves me much more inspired and much more at peace. I really enjoy just having that yoga book by my side, slowly going through it every morning because this is something that brings my attention to this practice. There's lots of really nice motivating videos on this channel specifically so don't forget to check out my other videos. That's what I strive to do on this channel to inspire you, to motivate you. We are definitely exchanging our experience, our struggles and achievements on this channel, which I find very beautiful and motivating. So thank you so much guys for your support. You're a part of my motivation. And just in general, for anything that I'm passionate about, I try to submerge myself in that world. That really helps me to remember why am I passionate about this. It helps to feel heard through other people's experience. This is such a great way to feel seen, to uh, fire up your practice and feel motivated. And last but not least, if something, probably the most important tip, motivation is not everything. Listen, I know it's an amazing feeling to feel motivated, to feel like you want to do those things that you want to do. However, motivation cannot be a deciding factor in your practice because you are not always going to feel motivated. Motivation will go away in a lot of points of that consistent work. I personally used to think that it's either you feel motivated and you do the thing or you don't feel motivated and you don't do the thing. And specifically with yoga, I learned how destructive that mindset was. So if the motivation is the only force that carries your goals, I'm sorry to tell you that, but they might start to seem less and less attainable. And when they start to seem less and less attainable, you start to have less and less motivation. And this is why I believe so much in daily practice. If I put emphasis on doing something every day, there comes in that factor of consistency and discipline that carries my practice. I might not want to do my practice a lot of the times. This is often the case. Yet I still try to because I committed to daily practice. So I have to do something every day. And oftentimes I come to that place of not wanting, but doing, and this is what leaves me motivated. Create a system, create a discipline that you become enslaved to. And that is what is going to make you motivated. Motivation is amazing. It's a great feeling. It inspires, it moves you, but it is not everything. And don't let your practice and your goals, your why depend on the level of motivation you have today. Yes, you can use all of the tips that I gave you above for cultivating motivation. This is something that I heavily rely on. Also a tiny tip that I love to apply to uh, my daily motivation levels is wearing a Bruce Lee t-shirt. <laughs> I just look at it and 
instantly motivated. Let me know if you like my t-shirt. That's pretty much the video for today. I hope that left you with some useful ways that you can bring more motivation into your life, into your practice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found some useful ways to cultivate more motivation in your life. I would love to hear what you think and if you have any tips for me. If you like this kind of content and you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe so we can see each other again. Duh. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.